Okay, welcome to factor this expression. Notice that this is a trinomial, so let's go ahead and use the tic tac toe method. Well, well, let's see. What times what give us 2x squared? Well, the combination for that will be just 2x times x, right? And now let's move here. What times what will give us positive 3? Well, we can have negative 1 times negative 3 or positive 1 times positive 3, right? And let me tell you, the correct combination that we're going to use is negative 1 and negative 3. And the order is that we are going to put negative 3 here and negative 1 right here. And the reason is because, remember when we do the check, we have to take the 2x times negative 1, and that will give us negative 2x, which is right here. And then I will have to take this and multiply with this, negative 3 times x, that will give us negative 3x. And if you look at this, combined with that, do we get negative 5x? Yes, we do, right? Therefore, you know, this right here is our correct combination. So finally, we can just write down the answer. We are factoring, you just go across. 2x minus 3, that's the first factor. So let's go ahead and write that down. And the second factor is x minus 1. And this right here is it. All right, here we're going to factor this. And notice that we have 8x cubed minus 32x. We do have common factors, right? So let's go ahead and do that first. Well, we know the 8 is just 8 times 1. And we also know that 8 goes into 32. 8 times 4 is 32. So we see that the 8 is in common. Therefore, we can take that out right away. Next, the x to the third power and x. We can factor out an x. You always do the x to the smaller power. This is x to the first. You can just go ahead and take that out. And the reason is because, you see, this is x to the third power, which is x times x times x. And the x is, of course, just one by itself. Well, this x and that x, they are in common. So you can take that to the front like this, right? All right, now let's see the leftover. x times x, we can write that as x to the second power, namely x squared, and then minus 4 like this. All right, so we did the factoring already, but you have to ask yourself, can we do more? And the answer to that is yes. Because this right here is a difference of two squares, and let me just write this down right here for you guys. We still have the 8x in the front, but for the x squared, we can look at the x in red, and then square, and then minus. The 4 can be looked at, yes, 2 squared, like this. And now we can use the formula for that, which is going to be the following. Let me write down the 8x first, though. All right, here we go. To factor x squared minus 2 squared, the first factor is x minus 2, and then the second factor is x plus 2. This is the difference of two squares. And this is the most that we can do. All right, here we are going to factor this. And notice that this has four terms. Therefore, we should do it by grouping. Yes. So that means let's go ahead and focus on the first two terms and then the last two terms. All right, here we go. We see that we have the 10 and then the 5. 5 is in common, so we can actually just factor that out. So let's go ahead and do that. Right? And then we see that this is x times y, and this is y. The y is in common, so we can again factor that out. And then let's see what we have left. This here, originally was 10, and we factor out the 5. What you can do is just do 10 divided by 5, which that will give us 2. So we have the 2 right here. And then we have the x, which we didn't do anything with it, so we can just write that down. And the y, we took it out already, so this is what we have. And then continue plus, well, we took both the 5 and the y out already. In that case, don't forget to put down a 1 right here, right? So that's pretty much what we have for the first part. And again, if you want to show work, if you want to break it down, you can do the following. For the 10, you can just write it down on the top. 5 times 2 is 10. And we know that this is a 5. Well, the 5 is in common, so we can factor it out. And then similarly, you see that the y is in common as well, so we can factor it out. And then you see the leftover, 2x right here, plus this right here, technically, it's like you have a 1 left, right? So just like 1, right? Because again, 5 times 1 is that 1 left. That's why you have to put down the 1. And yeah, just like that. <laughs> All right, let's do another part. Plus, let's just write this down, and then you see here we have 6, and this is 3. We know 3 goes into both of them, so we can factor out the 3. 
And that's it. And that's it. Originally, here we have 6x, but we factor the 3. You can do division. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. And the x, we didn't do anything. We we'll just write it down. And then plus, originally was 3. We factor the 3. Again, you can think about this as division. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So you have the plus 1 like this, right? And again, if you want to just do it like how I did it over there, 6 is the same as 3 times 2. And you see, we can factor out the 3 because it's in common. And with that said, we have the 2x left plus, again, we have that 1, right? Because 3 times 1 is equal to 3. So don't forget to put down the 1. All right, now, have a look. This parentheses and that parentheses are the same, right? In that case, we are going to factor that out. So let's go ahead and put that down. 2x plus 1 all the way in the front. Also, the water doesn't matter, but it's a good habit to write it down all the way in the front first. All right, for this part, we took this out already, so we have the 5y left. And then for the second part right here, well, we took this out already, we have the plus 3 left. So this is actually the final answer. 2x plus 1 times 5y plus 3. Again, the order and even the size of the parentheses, they don't matter, but this is it. Here we are going to factor x squared minus 9x minus 10. It has three terms. Of course, let's try it with the tic-tac-toe method. So here we go. This, 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 and that. What times what give us x squared? Yes, x times x. Great. Now, what times what give us negative 10? Well, you have two choices, right? It seems like it. Actually, you have a few more. You can do negative 2 times positive 5, or positive 2 times negative 5. Or you can also do negative 1 times positive 10, or negative 10 times positive 1. The correct combination that we're going to use is positive 1 times negative 10. The order right here doesn't matter because this and that, they are both x, right? This works because if you check x times negative 10, that gives us negative 10x, and then 1 times x, that gives us positive x. Negative 10x times x does give us the negative 9x. So you know this right here, checks, right? So finally, we can just write down the answer, x plus 1. Again, when you do the t title method, the answer is you go across. And then, right here, the second one is x uh, minus 1. I mean, x minus 10. x plus 1 times x minus 10. And that's it. Okay, another trinomial that we have to factor. Of course, we'll use the tic tac method for this. So go ahead and do this right away. Now, this is trickier because here we have a 9, right? 9x squared. Well, we can do x times 9x. Or we can also do 3x times 3x. And sometimes if your first choice doesn't work out, of course, don't give up. Usually, I will ask you guys the ones that are actually doable, right? And in fact, I will tell you the actual choice that we are going to use right here is 3x times 3x, right? If you use an x times 9x, unfortunately, that's not the correct choice. All right, now look at negative 10. What times what give us negative 10? Again, we have a few more choices. Hmm, 1 times negative 10, negative 1 times positive 10, or 2 and 5, but one of them have to be negative. Well, the correct combination that we are going to do is um, negative 5 and 2. I think it works. Why? Because if we take this times that, that will give us 6x, yeah? And then negative 5 times 3x, that will give us negative 15x. What's, neg uh, what's 6x minus 15x? Is that equal to negative 9x? Yes, it does. It checks. So we found our com correct combination. So in the end, we can just go like this. 3x minus 5 and 3x, this is a positive 2, so you just add 2 right here. And yes, that's it. All right, we are going to factor this, and it has four terms, therefore we should do it by grouping. So let's go ahead and get ready, focus on the first two terms, and then the last two terms. Well, here we have x to the third power plus 5x to the second power. Factor out x to the second power, right? So here we go. Factor this out, x to the second power. Well, originally we had x to the third power, but we took away x to the second power, right? 
So we have x to the first power left, like this, right? And then we have the plus and 5x squared, but we took this out already, so we just have the plus 5 like this. And again, if you want to just uh, break it down right here, for the x to the third power, you can write yes, x times x times x. 5x squared, the x squared you can look at yes, x times x. Well, we have x times x in common, that's why we can factor out the x squared. And we have this x left, and plus 5 left, just like that. So that's the idea. Now, for the next part, it's trickier. First, when you see a, the sign right here, you always need to write it down right away. This is a negative sign, right? It's a minus. You just go ahead and write that down right away, all right? Next, we still do the numbers. This is 9. This is 45. Well, we know 9 goes into both of them. Um, I will just factor out 9 first, like this. And again, you can look at the 40. 5 as 9 times 5. You see the 9 is in common, so we can factor it out, right? Open the parentheses. Now, for the first term, we took out the 9 already, and we have the x left, so we can put that down. And notice that originally, this part was meant to be negative 9x. Well, we have negative 9x right here, so we are good. Now, for the last part right here, this is really tricky. Be really careful with it. Originally, we have negative 45, but we took away negative 9 on the outside. Think about division. Negative 45 divided by negative 9 is positive 5. So this actually turns out to be positive, and we have that 5 left like this. Again, you always write down whatever this sign is right away, and because this is negative, technically, Inside here, we have to change the sign. That's why this negative becomes positive. And if you would like, again, you can just do division. Look at negative 45 divided by negative 9. We end up with positive 5, right? Or you can just uh, you know, put on the 5 and then think about negative divided by negative is positive 5, like that. All right, so this is what we have. And then we see that this and that parentheses are the same, so we can factor it out, factor out the x plus 5, and then we have the x squared, so let's go ahead and write that down, minus 9, like this, right? Now, it seems that we are done, but no, because you should always ask yourself, can we do more? And the answer to that is, yes, we can do it right here, because I will write this down right here for you guys. This is the same as saying x squared minus the 9 is the same as 3 squared we can factor out a difference of two squares. So finally, I'll just write this down right here. x plus 5, it stays the same. But for this part, well, use the formula. We get x minus 3 times x plus 3, right? The difference of two squares, just like that. So here we have it. This right here is our answer. Okay, let's try to factor this. And in fact, the reason I say let's try is because this right here is not factorable. No matter how hard you try, it's just not possible. You can seriously try it, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Well, for example, we know x times x will give us x squared. That's good. But what times will give you 6? In the meantime, they add up to 8. Not possible anymore, right? You can try 6 and 1, but that's going to give you 7. You see, this times this is 1x, and this times this is... 6x, so that's 7x, it's not 8x. And maybe if you would like, you can try 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is equal to 8. I mean, 2 times 3 is equal to 6. You can try 2 here and 3 here, but this times this will give you 3x, this times this is going to give you 2x. And that's not the same as 8x. So in fact, no matter how hard we try, this is just not possible. So I will just give you guys a little surface here, right? Anyway, though, don't just draw a surface on the exam whatsoever. You have to just say this is not factorable. Go ahead and write that down. This is not factorable, right? And don't even show this. Just kind of cross it out because this right here does not even work. Okay, we are going to factor this right here and it has four terms. Therefore, we shall try it by grouping, right? So here we go. Let's look at the first two terms and then the last two terms. 
For this and that, notice we have x to the third power here, and this is x squared, so we can factor out x to the second power. And of course, this is just one, so just no number for that. Anyway, let's factor out an x squared right here, and then, well, originally, x to the third power, and we factor the other x to the second power, 3 minus 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, <laughs> right? So this is x to the first power. And then, for the second part, we took this out already, so we have the minus 16 right here, okay? All right, now, again, write down the sign right here, right away. This is a minus, just go ahead and write that down. Then, for this, we're looking at the numbers 4 and 64. We know 4 does go into both of this. The truth is, 4 goes into 64 16 times. 4 times 16 is equal to 64. So you see, the 4 is in common, so we will just factor that out. And I'll open the parentheses. You see, originally this is negative 4x, but we took out the 4, and we also took out the x, I mean the negative, so we have the x right here. Just x. Eh? And then, originally, we have 64, but we took out a negative 4. Go ahead and do 64 divided by negative 4. That will give us negative. Again, we have to change the sign, because negative times negative will give you positive, yeah? Negative, and then we have that 16 right here. So this is the, the way to do it, right? The legitimate way. And you can expect it, this parentheses and that parentheses are the same. So of course, we can factor this all the way in the front. x minus 16 times, this is x squared minus 4, like this. Now, can we do more? Yes. Can we factor this? No, because this is just x to the first power minus 16. x to the first power minus 16, we cannot factor that anymore. However, for this one, x squared minus 4, which we can look at this as x squared, and then minus 2 squared, and then use the difference of 2 squares formula. So here we go, let's write this down. This is still the same, x minus 16. But for this part, we will have x minus 2, and then times x plus 2, just like that. And with that, yes, we are done. Here we'll factor 20x squared minus 45y squared. Well, deal with the numbers first, namely 20 and 45. What do they have in common? The 5. Because we know that 5 times 4 will give us 20, and 5 times 9 will give us 45. So the 5 is in common. Well, that's it, because this is x squared and this is y squared, so that's all, right? So here we go, let's factor out the 5. I'll put that in the front, and then for the first part, we have 4x squared left. So let's write that down. And then minus 9y squared, like this. Now, can we do more? And the answer is yes. Well, this is the difference of actually a 2 squared. For the 4x squared, this is how we have to do it. Put a parenthesis first, and ask yourself, what to the second power will give you 4? Well, the answer to that will be 2, yeah? 2 squared is 4. And then, of course, to get x squared, I need x inside, and a square that will give us x squared. So that's good. And this is minus, and again, for the 9y squared, we put down a parenthesis first, and ask ourselves, what to the second power will give us 9? And the answer will be 3. And y squared, so we can get a y squared. Yeah? So that's pretty much the idea. Now, finally, for this part, we'll just use the difference of two squares formula, but don't forget to write down the 5. And here we go. For this, we will get 2x minus 3y, and then we multiply by 2x plus 3y. And that's it. Plus 3y right here. So, this right here. Is it? We are going to factor this right here. And of course, we can use the tic tac method because it has three terms, right? So go ahead and give it a try. So, here we go. Well, to produce 4x squared, we should have 2x times 2x. Hmm? Maybe that will work. So let's go ahead and try it. And to produce negative 15, what times 4 give us negative 15? Hmm. Maybe we can use negative 5 and positive 3. So let's put that down and see what happens. And let's see. We will have to do this times that. 
2x times 3, that will be 6x, and negative 5 times 2x, let's see, this is negative 10x. Unfortunately, 6x minus 10x, that's not the same as negative 17x. So this right here is actually not correct. Does that mean we don't have an answer for this? No, it just means that we had a wrong combination, right? So let's go ahead and try again. Let me just write this down one more time. And this time I will show you guys the correct combination. All right, here we go. Tic tac toe in action. In fact, we should use 4x times x. Well, again, sometimes I wouldn't know unless I actually check it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, it works, right? Anyway, here we go. What times what give us negative 15? Well, we are still going to use negative 5 and 3. And we actually have to put negative 5 here and 3. Because, again, when you check, you have to do this times this. And that will be negative 20x. Yep. Yeah? And then, take 3 times x, that will be positive 3x. What's negative 20x combined with 3x? Yes, we do have negative 17x, so it checks. So that means we have the correct combination. So finally, we'll just write down the answer and go across. We have 4x plus 3 times x minus 5, just like this, and then we're done.